welcome to the new Jerusalem Healing Ministry. And um, sorry that we've been all for you know a while. We've been showing the same program over and over, but I've been going to school and going to work, so it's been a little difficult. So just taking time now to apologize. So now we are back, and just to welcome you once again to the New Jerusalem Healing Ministry. And we're going to continue talking about abortion, like we've always been talking about, teaching about, and preaching about. So before we do anything, let us just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this moment. We just thank you for this hour, Lord, that you've made it possible for us to teach your word, to preach your word. And we just thank those who are watching right now. Bless them, Lord, and open up their hearts so they will receive your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Welcome once more to the New Jerusalem Healer Ministry. And um, thank you for tuning in. And like I said, we're gonna continue talking about abortion. And I've been, if you've been tuning in with us, um, we've been talking about abortion, teaching about it and preaching about it, and just letting everyone know that it's not okay. God is not okay with abortion. So today our scripture is taken from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. And if you have your Bible with you, please just tune in with me and open up your Bible to Proverbs. And Proverbs is right after Psalms. So Proverbs chapter 6, and we're going to be reading from verses 16 to 19. Again, Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 16 to 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among brethren. So let me go back to, um, to verse 17, which says, hands that shed innocent blood. So Proverbs is just telling us that God hates these things and he does not like us to shed innocent blood. So abortion, what abortion does is shed innocent blood, shed the, light, the blood, kill his children and shed their their blood so if you're tuning in, in with us today if you've been affected by abortion in any way whether you're planning right now to have an abortion whether you've had an abortion in the past and you've been affected by it uh, I'm here to minister to you because the Holy Spirit has asked me to minister to teach about abortion because God is just tired of his children being murdered on our land every day and so the Holy Spirit has specifically gave me this assignment um, because I, I didn't just wake up one morning and said I'm gonna preach or teach an abortion this is something that I did years ago and before the Holy Spirit used me he had to minister to me he had to heal me because abortion has a way of silencing someone. When a woman has had an abortion, the person is silenced by this, and that's a lie from the enemy. And so the Holy Spirit wants me to continue with this ministry, you know, to speak healing into your lives, whoever has been affected by this. And not just women, men too out there are affected by abortion because the law of our land in America here and some other places states that it's okay for a woman to have an abortion so it's not okay with God this is killing his children it's murder and so the Holy Spirit like I said wants me to continue with teaching and preaching on abortion so this way people who are affected who have been hurt you know by abortion in any way whether you know you were pressured into having an abortion or you decided you know, it's going to mess up your life, it's going to affect your school, maybe your spouse didn't want, want you to have the baby. So in any way, we're not here, the New Jerusalem Healing Ministry, we're not here to condemn anybody because only God, God is the only one that sees the heart, knows the heart, and will judge the heart. I'm here, my duty here 
is to teach, to do what the Holy Spirit has asked me to do, and that is to continue to preach and teach about abortion. And so as I read this um, passage here from Proverbs, it says here, which is going to be our um, our passage for the for today. I don't want to bombard us with a lot of passages. I just want us to focus on, to meditate on this today, that God hates hands, our hands that shed innocent blood. And so, if, if we look at abortion, if we really sit down to think about it, this is not a woman has a right. To have an abortion no who gives you the right to have an abortion who gives you the right to kill another human being and like my husband stated one time in the past he says um, he said something to this effect he said um, no one has the right to kill another human being and so there should be not no debate on whether to kill or not to kill you know to have your baby or not to have your baby you know he mentioned this which was which is very true God does not like us to shed innocent blood. Our hands is giving us hands and our hands are not to, to shed innocent blood. We shouldn't use our hands to kill, but to do good. Amen. So as I continue, um, just um, reflecting on the past, a little bit of some of the things that we have been teaching about and some of the methods of abortion, you know, because if you really think about it, the womb, of a woman that's where God has ordained for the baby to grow and it's in the same womb that the killing takes place and this is so wrong one of the methods of abortion now which is so gruesome one of the methods is you know it takes like two days you go to the clinic they give you a pill and then you go back the next day they give you another pill and a woman will have or a teenager wherever it is will have the baby at home we're going to the toilet and the baby will be flushed down into the toilet. So this method of abortion is so gruesome if you really think about it. You know, the baby is given a pill and the baby is being flushed down the toilet. If you have a cesspool, the body parts of the baby is in your cesspool or the body parts of a baby it's, it's in the sewage system. And so we are, we are living on, on bloodshed and every day this happens not only in America and you know all over the world and so God is just saying enough is enough America you know enough is enough it's time for us to stop this shedding of innocent blood so you know that, that's just one of the methods and um, there are plenty of methods another one is saline solution um, method whereby you know a saline solution is injected into the womb and the baby's heart stops right away you know, and then after the baby dies in the clinic, what happens? You know, the body part is being scooped out. And I'm sorry if this offends you if you're watching right now, but I'm not here. You know, I'm here to teach and preach an abortion that the Holy Spirit has asked me to do. And if you're offended, I'm sorry you're offended, but I have to do what God has asked me to do. And so, you know, and the thing about abortion is you don't know when he's going to knock on your door. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be your daughter. It could be your son pregnated someone. It could be your brother, your sister. It could be anyone, you know, that you could be affected by abortion. So like I said, I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm just here to teach and to preach what God has assigned me to do. And if God has given me this assignment, he's given me the grace to do it, amen. He's given me the anointing to do it. So if you're affected by abortion in, in any way, you know, pick up the phone, give me a call. I would love to minister to you. Amen. You know, my email is here. It will be on the screen. My telephone will be on the screen. And my P.O. box as well will be on the screen. Because God wants us to, to be educated about abortion. You know, he doesn't want us to, to go astray because of lack of knowledge. Because we all know what lack of knowledge does. So the God that created us, the God of the universe, is saying enough is enough. You know, we should stop killing his children because they are, we are his children. You know, we are just, we are here on this world. This is not my home. This is just temporary. Someday, like we all see, we've known family members that have passed on, you know, to be with the Lord. We're just here temporary. And while we are here, you know, our hands, we need to use our hands. It might rephrase that. We need to use our hands to do good, not to shed innocent blood. You might say, oh, well, I didn't kill the baby. Well, you had to sign papers. 
you know, for the doctors to to for you to have an abortion in the clinic. You, they're not gonna just gonna. You have to sign papers and you have to pay. So in technically, in other words, you're saying I'm paying for my child, you know, to be killed because that's exactly what you're doing. That baby in your womb is not a fetus. It's not a blob of blood like you know we all hear about it. It's a child. Amen. It's a child. And it doesn't matter, I'm not here to judge you, like I said, it doesn't matter by what means or what happened or what took place. All I'm saying to you is, do not, if you're pregnant right now and you're struggling with this decision, should I have my baby, should I not, you know, I've come to tell you that God, you know, will give you the grace to keep that baby. God will give you the grace to be able to provide for that baby. And whoever is pressuring you into having an abortion, you know, that is wrong because that is not of God. And someone will always reach out, always reach out to someone, you know, reach out to the church. If you're calling right now, or maybe you know somebody, give them my number. My, if you don't want to call me, you know, you feel somehow, you know, you don't want to speak to me, email me. I'll be glad to email you back, PO Box me. You know, write to me, that's my P.O. box, and it will be on the screen. And so, you know, I just thank God for those who are watching right now. Excuse me. <clears throat> and like I said, you know, God doesn't want us to continue to kill his children. So, you know, like I said, I'm encouraging you. And also, if you want to be part of this program, just give me a call. You know, I would be happy for you to be here with me, to share your experience, you know. And also to this, I uh, um, want to touch on something, you know, because a lot of times women, you know, have an abortion because of rape. And my heart goes out to anyone, you know, who has been raped and is pregnant and has to deal with this decision. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. Welcome back to the New Jerusalem Healer Ministry. I'm just taking a few moments to introduce my book to you, Be My Voice, and it's been out for a couple of months. And um, this is the book that God has inspired me, the Holy Spirit specifically gave me the, the name of the book and also the amount of chapters, with their five chapters in the book to, to write about. And um, just to read a few things um, that's in the book. And if you'd like a copy, you know, just give me a call. Again, my number will be on the screen. And, or you could email me if you'd like. And I'll be happy to send you a copy and to let you know how much it is. So this is, um, I'm just going to read you a few lines from the book. It says, abortion involves the shedding of innocent blood. Who could possibly be more innocent than an unborn baby? The baby has done no wrong, yet he or she pays the price by death in cold blood. A place where he or she feels protected, safe, and nourished is the same place where the brutal act of murder takes place right in the womb. And so this is why I'm reading this because it just um, coincides with a scripture that we've just read that God hates, um, you know, hands that shed innocent, uh, um, innocent blood. You know, God's, God is, you know, does not like people, you know, that commit the act of abortion. He does not, I mean, he loves us, but he doesn't want us to be killing his children. And um, also to abortion is reversible. Once it's done, there is no way to remedy the situation. The killing has taken place, murder has been committed, the baby is gone. Imagine sitting in a crowded waiting room observing each other's fearful, anxious faces while signing death certificates for what is very much alive within you. Seeing crying women giving tranquilizers and sent home to recuperate and forget about the incident. And so just a few lines from my book, like I said, I would love to encourage you to, you know, call me so I could send you a copy and God will truly bless you. Like I said, you never know when abortion will knock on your door. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be your uncle, it could be your aunt that's affected in some way. It could be your daughter, it could be your daughter's friend. 
you know it could be anyone around us whether you're in the church or not you know because you know we're in the church and we don't want anyone to know oh you know we are pregnant you might be pregnant in the church but notwithstanding whatever your situation is you know God will make a way for you amen Welcome once again to the New Jerusalem Healing Ministry and um, thank you for watching and if you just tune in with us we continue to talk about abortion and I know when everyone hears the word abortion you know everybody has their own views about it but it's not about what you think it's not about what I think but it's about what God says because he's our creator he's our maker whether you like it or not it's it's what God has to say and Basically, what God, what God has to say, it's wrong, it's a sin, and it's murder, and it's killing off his children, because that's the way God has ordained um, each and every one of us, including his son, Jesus Christ, to be born into this world, in the womb. And so, like I was saying before, um, talking about rape, and my heart goes out, I've never experienced that, so I'm not one that is... You know very much knowledgeable about it but what I could say about it is that um, you know and my heart goes out to anyone you know who's been raped whether you're a man or a woman because that happens to it's not only women that get raped but in this case like we're talking about abortion you know if the woman you know is raped you know she's been raped and she's pregnant you know <clears throat> I could just imagine you know what that person will be going through and if you're watching right now you know if this is something that has happened to you if you know someone that this has happened to you that has happened to you know and, and of course anyone would struggle anyone will go through the emotions because we're human beings you know and for something horrendous like that to happen to you can just imagine but what I have to say is and not just my point of view the same principle applies you know I know you're hurting right now if I'm speaking to you or your family members been affected by rape I could just imagine like I said my heart goes out to you but you know and it's also in my book as well you know which I shared with you I've touched a little bit on rape um, what I have to say is and you know also you know backing up with the Word of God the child you know that you're carrying right now you know, who committed the crime? You know, who, it wasn't the child. I mean, the child is a victim and you, you're also a victim as well. You're both victims. So the person that raped you, that's the person that the law, of course, should be dealt with, you know, and leave that person to, to Christ. So what I'm trying to say to you is, don't look at the child that you're carrying right now. You're probably thinking, oh, this person raped me, I'm coming a rapist child. That child, part of that child is very much, you know, you part of the child is, is, I mean, you're part of that child, put it that way, if, you know, for you to understand that. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, that child is a victim and you're also a victim. So. You know, if you're struggling with decision, decision whether to have the child or abort the child, you're hearing so many things coming in your, your head, bombarding you. Oh, you can't have that child. That's going to be a rapist child. No, that child is it's still a child of God, you know. And so, yes, this horrible thing has happened to you, but God will make it right. That's the kind of God that we serve. Is a God that would change any situation you're in and God sees what happened to you he knows what happened to you and he will make it right and so you know like we always say two wrongs don't make it right but in this situation what wrong did the child commit you know I'm speaking to you right now I'm reaching out to you that child did not do any wrong the person that raped you that's the person that did you wrong and so for you to have an abortion to kill that child you know that's not what God you know wants you and I'm taking my time to explain because I know this is a very difficult situation you know you're going through the, the turmoil you're going through all that you know I'm, I'm talking about it now but you know like I said if you're watching right now and this is something that has happened to you 
you know I, I can't say okay I really know what you're going through but I could just minister God's word to you I could just plead with you to have that child and God will make a way you know this child that you're carrying right now you never know down the road this child would be the you know one of the best children you ever have this child might be there for you in your old age you never know this child could grow up to be a doctor a lawyer or whatever plan that God has for that child so it doesn't matter the circumstances look at Jesus Christ look at his circumstances the way he came into this to this hurt look at what happened to him the scandal you know uh, Mary was engaged to Joseph she got pregnant so you know I'm not here to judge to judge you you know but I'm just here to minister healing to you and if you've had an abortion right now you know and you're struggling you're feeling the guilt because abortion has a way of silencing the woman you know I've been there so I could really relate to what you're going through I could talk about it I could minister to you because these are some of the things that I've been through that the guilt you know, you feel guilty, the shame, the, you're condemning yourself. How could I ever even think about going to the clinic, you know, to, to have an abortion, to get rid of my child? Because we're using, we're using the fancy word abortion, but it's killing, it's murder. You know, it's getting rid of the baby. You know, it's not a, 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 um, a blob of blood or whatever they call it. It's a child in your womb. And it doesn't matter the circumstances that surrounds you know the conception of that child like I said I'm not here to judge I'm not God I'm just here to minister to you and so if you you know if you're struggling with abortion the guilt the shame the regret and you're still you know like feeling like your whole world is falling apart you know you probably remember the you know the incident in the clinic you know and all those things keeps on coming back to you and it's preventing you from moving forward you know I'm just I just come here to to preach to you and to teach to you that if you give your life to Christ, if you're not a believer, God will change your circumstances around. It will make you whole again. It will forgive you. But you have to reach out to him and ask him for, for him to forgive you. Because, yes, it is murder. It's not that a woman, a woman's right, I have the right to, to kill. No, you don't have a right to kill. I don't have a right to kill. And, and that's just the lie from the pit of hell, the lie from the enemy, that a woman has the right to have an abortion. No, we do not. And, it, and the way the, the abortion is taking place, can you just imagine going in the clinic and just to see how the, how the baby is being you know, taken out of the womb? And I have to teach you like this. There's no, I'm not going to pretty it up. There's no fancy way to put it because I don't want to get your feelings hurt. I've been there. So I have to tell you, this is not the way to go. And if this is something that you've done, that you've done, there's healing for you. You know, God is here to minister to your broken heart, to bring you back to wholeness, to get you happy because he is a merciful God. And every sin that would ever commit, that's why Jesus Christ went to the cross. You know, for every sin that would ever commit, you know, this forgiveness. But you have to reach out. You have to, what you don't acknowledge. I mean, you have to acknowledge the fact that, you know, you killed someone. Because without you, like I read before, without you sign the papers and say it's okay, or without you, you know, paying, because you have to pay, you know, and I'm being blunt about it as, as I can. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to pretty it up because it's not a pretty situation. These children, there are millions, I mean billions of children that are being murdered on our land through abortion every day. And so there are billions of women that are being affected by abortion, not only in America, but all over. Okay, I just thank God for you that you've tuned in where whichever part of the world you're watching right now. And um, we'll be tuning in, I hope you tune in um, the same time. Um, and you know God will definitely will bless you and if this ministry has been a blessing to you you know I like you to reach out to someone else if you know someone else who is going struggling with the issue of abortion and give them my number and um, have them call me now um, before I go I'd like to pray with you and let us just close our eyes in prayer Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, we just thank you. We give you praise, God. We give you glory. Father, you know the millions, the billions of children who are affected by abortion. And so the billions of women, men, family members out there who are tormented by this um, act of abortion. And Father, we know what your word says. We should not commit murder. We should not kill. And you hate hands that shed innocent blood. 
Father, we just pray for mercy. And if you're out there right now, you've been affected by abortion, just ask God for forgiveness right now. Say, Father God, I just, just forgive me for the abortions that I've had. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. And, um, and he will. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise because you are a merciful God. And we know that all the sins that would ever commit, including abortion, that you've paid for this in Calvary. And so we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. And we know that these children, that their lives of loss, we know that they're with you, Lord. Because we know you're the only one that could kill the body and the spirit. You know, their bodies are broken, but their spirit are with you. And so if you'd like to give your life to Christ right now, just pray this simple prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord that you've given us Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. Thank you, Jesus, for paying that dear price for me in Calvary. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life from now on. Holy Spirit of God, come into my heart. Be with me. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And if you said that simple prayer, you know, you've been born again, just continue to read God's Word, you know, and continue to get yourself involved in a ministry and you could give me a call I love to minister to you until next time from the New Jerusalem healing ministry bye bye